guys what's going on jab here welcome back to the show guys today we are going to be talking about the fact that the dollar the dxy some people call it the dixie has just dumped what does this mean it basically means that the total value of the dollar in relation to other forex currencies other foreign currencies has gone down but in the exact same hour that a drop on the dollar index began a rally on the bitcoin price also kicked off and at the moment bitcoin is rallying quite a bit in fact it just had a breakout about five minutes ago it's sitting at forty four thousand two hundred and eighty dollars and as you can see in the title, we're asking the question, is a short squeeze about to happen? Now, if you don't know what a short squeeze is, basically all that means is that whenever people are in short positions and the market rallies too far, then something called a liquidation happens and they're forced to close that short position, buying back into the market, causing buying pressure, and then the dominoes start to fall. We've seen a lot of long squeezes recently that have dropped the price quite a bit, but we might be about to see a massive short squeeze, which could catapult the price of the market up several thousand dollars in the span of just an hour. I have witnessed this happen before. We're going to talk about today if that is in the cards. And guys, we have like a dozen other on-chain metrics we need to look at. We're going to look at several different altcoins. You can find them in the description. We have so much to talk about today. And before you walk away from this show, you're going to have a better understanding of not only what's going on in the cryptocurrency market, but also how to think about cryptocurrency markets and analyze cryptocurrency markets so that you can achieve financial sovereignty in the crypto space. I am very much looking forward to today's show. Smash that like button if you haven't already. I am joined, as always, by my co-host, T.A. Tim. Yeah, I was having a good morning until I sat down at my desk and found this. Bro, that was on my desk, and I was like, uh, This terrifying. scares the crap out that, of me. I, that is me. so scary. That is terrifying. Uh, why is my mouth cut out, Sonny? Yeah. Uh, well, I hold it up to your it. face. Uh, or don't. Is this for anyone to be able to do? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Say, hello. Someone should do the show. It's like one of those things at a carnival where you put your mouth yeah, up, you I, put, your, put your head up I to made it. that to troll Tim that, while that's we were shooting That's only coin. very disconcert, disconcerting. That's, that's, that, 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 that's, that's kind of terrifying, that's actually. That's scary. Yeah, well, anyway, let's uh, let's go to the culprit. Uh, Smay, how you doing, buddy? What what led you to do that? <laughs> I did it because it was funny. and I Well, actually, sorry, I said why Bitcoin. It was while we were shooting TikToks yesterday. I wanted to mess with Tim. Um, <laughs> sorry, guys. I just want to have a little bit of fun. All right. All right. All right. But, all right. All right. All right. So here's something really special that I want to get to do. So what I'm going to do actually today for members, and I'm going to go ahead and just shout out some members in the chat real quick. Woo, and then I have go. a special announcement. I'm going to shout out Mike Markle. Uh, love you. Get to see go you every Mike. single day. Crypto Alchemist. Mm -hmm. TZ. Go, Leon TZ. the Dutch. Matt C. JoJo, our brand new, new member. member. Shout out to JoJo. Oh yep. my gosh. You guys are the best. I love you guys. You guys are... Oh, I the Beholder. I there the beholder. we go. What's up, man? You guys are the best. That needs to be buyable but, merch. I agree. We need a buyable merch like mask of Tim's face. Uh, nah. Anyways, guys. <laughs> That's your Get us on a watch list here's or your, if we're not uh, careful. Here's your special announcement, guys. <laughs> Uh, and I, I'm pretty sure, like, uh, this is going to be a surprise to some people in this room, even. Guys, right after this stream, we're doing our members Q&A! Woo! Woo! So, all you members, get to... And listen, so here's something special I really need to tell you. I know I'm taking a little bit of time. But here's the thing. Here's the important thing you need to know. You will not probably get... Because this feature of streaming to members is in beta. So, you probably will not get a notification. So, in order to find it... Jeb, why don't you pull up the YouTube channel? I will pull, pull up, up the YouTube pull channel. Pull up the YouTube channel. Take a look at the stream. You can see pull up the channel. beautiful smiling oh, face. Yeah. Come on over to Crypto Jeb. Yeah. Go to membership. Membership. Yep. Membership. Go to membership and it will Woo. pop up there. See, there's the that. last one. There, yep. You can watch the last one. There Seven you go. days ago. There you go. So, guys, fun. if you're not a member and you're interested in being a member, you should be a member to check out that stream. We're literally streaming it as soon as we go off on live on this one. Mm -hmm. We'll have like uh, five minutes for me to set it up, and then we're going to go live on that one. So it's going to be really great. It's going to be great. Cannot wait. Thank you guys so much for joining and staying with our community. We are always so very thankful for you. And by the way, drop a one in chat for how well Tim did yesterday. Absolutely killed it, man. Thank you so very much for filling in. I was at my meeting uh, that happens on the second Wednesday of every single month. I'm back. I'm refreshed. I have a lot of ideas about how to improve the channel, as always, and I'm excited to jump into the stream. But we cannot forget... Mr. Caleb, how you doing, Caleb? Good to see you, buddy. Uh, I'm doing well. Um, woke up this morning, feel really good, feel really blessed. Let's um, go. Got some good news. Uh, within the week, we are going to be the social media team is going to be launching Smay's TikTok. So, Whoa, I didn't know that. That Let's actually go. is news to me. That's news to me. Oh, so, Let's go. Go. Course, Just man. got approved yesterday. Um, so <laughs> look out. Smay is going to be on TikTok. Smay is going to be on a TikTok. That's very, Smay's taking that's over TikTok, That's dangerous. That's, that's, that's kind of scary. I'm kind of scared that... Uh, 
We'll see how that goes. No, I'm joking. It's going to be great. Guys, we're going to jump on, instead of to Coin Market Cap, we're going to jump on to Coin Gecko because if I show you what's going on over here on Coin Market Cap, they've changed something where if you look at the last 24 hours biggest gainers, it shows literally every single cryptocurrency. So we got some of these projects down here that are up. 7,000%, and then we have ones that are down 100% that are probably pump and dump. Anyway, uh, yeah, so CoinMarketCap's a little messed up. We're going to jump on over to its competitor that uh, is always a little behind, CoinGecko. CoinGecko is a pretty good pro a pretty good site that is a cryptocurrency tracker. And we're going to go ahead and do our snapshot, our mar market pulse, and then we're going to jump in and look at Algorand, and we're going to look at Terra Luna. Right now, Bitcoin is trading at $42,300 and change. It is in a very steep rally at the moment. Just literally 30 minutes ago, it was sitting at 43870 This is incredibly important, and we're going to talk about long liquid or uh, short liquidations here in just a little bit because I do believe that we're going to start seeing some short squeezes. You can already see $25,000 liquidated, $55,000 liquidated, $11,000 liquid or excuse me shorts i'm sorry one million dollars liquidated 1.45 million dollars liquidated 1.73 million dollars liquidated bunch of shorts getting liquidated right now could we be on the precipice of a massive massive short squeeze we're going to talk about that more if you're just hearing this term short squeeze for the first time or if you don't know what a short trade is we're going to break it down what all of that means don't you worry but for right now just know that a short squeeze is a cascading series of events that leads to a massive jump in the price of bitcoin and one could be right around the corner as far as our top projects, Bitcoin sitting up above uh, where it was yesterday. It's up, you know, $500 in the last 30 minutes, but it's up about 1% in the last 24 hours. ETH sitting up here at $3,400. We're going to look at ETH later. That's actually a very interesting number where it is. Solana's up around 157 That means that it has broken above its re its resistance at 150 We've talked about how 150 and below may be a decent buying opportunity. Dono is sitting down here at 131 Pretty happy about that. I scooped up a lot of Cardano. My average entry on Cardano is somewhere in the 120s now, so I'm pretty happy with with that XRP sitting at 80 cents and Luna, which we're going to talk about in a second, sitting at 85 bucks. Looking at the biggest gainers and losers over the last 24 hours, Harmony up 11%, Oasis Network up 11%, Olympus up 10%. We got some double digit gainers over the last 24 hours. That's a very good sign. Even just looking at the seven day charts on some of these projects, you can see that they are rallying steep. They are rallying very, very quickly. Monero also up quite a bit. Over the last seven days, 4.5%, up 9% on the day. That is pretty, pretty powerful, and that indicates, signifies that a lot of people are finding buys outside of just Bitcoin. So I like seeing that. Now, as far as the biggest losers, we have a Frax Share, which I'm going to be honest, is not a project I've ever seen before. Eagle down 2.4%. ICP, Internet Computer, down 24%. But if we just scroll down here to see the middle point, this is something that I used to do when I would do market pulses on the channel, like literally over three years ago. One thing I would always like to do, and then I'm going to start doing again, is I like to scroll down and see how many coins are negative and how many coins are positive. So if we look here, the number of negative coins here, negative uh, that are that are in the red, it's probably about 15 to 20 coins. And then the rest of the market is green. So we're looking at maybe 20, maybe 25 cryptocurrencies that are red. The rest of them are green. That's a pretty good sign. That does indicate to me that the market is more bullish than it is bearish. And of course, that shows up in the sentiment of Bitcoin. And yes, I do see all the volatility going on on Bitcoin. Don't you worry. We're going to get to Bitcoin here relatively soon. And if it does start to pop off like a popcorn kernel and it starts going off like Roman Firework or a Roman Candle, we will jump on over to it. But let's go ahead and keep moving here. We're going to look at Algo. Algorand over Tether. This is a project that you guys ask about a lot. This is a project that we have looked at a lot. And we're going to look at it again. One of the things that I want you to know about Algo is that it has been doing very well over the last uh, a year or so. It's sitting at rank number 23, $10 billion market capitalization. If we look at all-time history, we rallied all the way up to above $2. We're currently sitting at $1.50. It's down a little bit, but of course, everything's down a little bit from all-time high right now. The fact that it has managed to jump into the all-time high category, or excuse me, into the top 25 in just the last you know six months and change is a definitely a big uh, mark in its favor. As far as the technicals are concerned, though, guys, this line right here strikes me as one of the most important lines on the entire chart. It's constituted by a, by a local top. At the time, I believe it was an all-time high or close to it. It was actually a local top back on Valentine's Day last year. And then we also saw uh, in April of 2021, we rallied up here. And then uh, May of 2020, we rallied up here. That set a three-line trend line that was a downtrend. And then re uh, later on in the year, around September, we managed to break above that, and we've been using this level of support ever since. So right now, Algo is basically in a 
gigantic trading channel. And as we know about trading channels, they typically act as continuation. So if that were to occur, then we would see Algo go up to about $3. This is going to have a lot to do with its fundamentals. So here's what I'm going to say on Algo. If it's going to go into a big rally, it's likely going to be driven by fundamental developments on the project. I'm not going to get into the fundamentals right now. So you're going to have to do that on your own, or we can talk about it in a future video. The other thing I'll say is that it wants to hold this level because it's down negative 50% from all time high around hundred and around a dollar and 35 cents. If it doesn't hold that, then you are going to have to start looking for other support lines. And finally, I will mention this support line that just jumped out at me uptrend right here connected with the bottom here on the 24th of July. That's also where we are right now. So there is a strong argument to be made that we are very close to a permanent, bo uh, permanent bottom on algo or at least a very strong bottom. But again, you're going to need to see how one, the fundamentals play out and two, how the rest of the cryptocurrency market plays out if that is going to to continue. Now, I'm going to briefly mention Luna. We talk about Luna quite a bit, so I'm not going to go into too much detail on this. Luna is a project that I am a big fan of, and I am looking to get some of. It's currently sitting at rank number nine. And if you don't know what Luna is, it is something called an algorithmic stablecoin project. And essentially what that is, is it's a way of autonomously and in a decentralized fashion regulating the supply of a stablecoin so that you don't have to have a centralized third party such as Tether or such as Gemini, I believe they have their own stablecoin, uh, regulating the supply to keep the price of a stablecoin at $1. So that's what Luna does. It uses the way that the it, it, there are certain rewards for people buying and selling the project that helps to keep the stablecoins that are built on top of it, like a uh, UST um, uh, right, around, right at $1. So it's a very powerful project and in my opinion, the most stable of the stable coins as far as it's going to be very difficult to regulate it. I do think that it is going to perform very well and it already has. That's why it's ranked number nine. This is a blue chip. You're not going to probably make a another 100x on this, but if you're looking for a backbone of your project, a large cap that's going to be around, this is probably a good project. As far as the price is concerned, there is a massive long-term uptrending level of, of support right here. And we almost pulled back to touch it right here when we pulled back to $62. We didn't quite get there. We have had a pretty major bottom. And at the moment, just looking on the four hourly chart, shows up on the daily chart too. You can see that there is potentially an inverse head and shoulders pattern forming right here. Definitely be watching out for the, about the $93 to $100 mark. You want to see Luna break that because that's when it's going to start going into all time high territory. This inverse head and shoulders pattern would have a price target up around $150 if we just do an extrapolation here. So that is going to be, excuse me, not $150, about $125. So that would definitely be a very, very good thing if that played out. If Luna does go down, I'll just tell you what I'm going to do. If Luna does go down here below 70 again, I should have scooped some up on this dip. I wasn't paying attention to it when it dropped that low. But if it does go back down here again below 75-ish, I will probably scoop up maybe 1% of my portfolio in Luna. I don't want a massive amount of exposure to it per personally, but I do think it's a good project and I would like to have some in my portfolio. But with that said, we are going to go ahead and check in with the chat, read any super chats that we have. If there's no super chats, we'll read regular chat. Thank you guys so very much for all of your engagement. We love you so much and we want to see you reach financial sovereignty because I believe you have a God-given purpose that you need to live out if you want to have a fulfilled life and having sovereignty over your finances is the way that you are going to be able to do that. At least that is a major component that we want to help you with. So let's go ahead and read some super chats and then we're going to dive straight on into some Bitcoin here in about five minutes. Uh, John Bill Billcliffe uh, said, let's go Harmony One. Um yeah, Harmony One's doing pretty well. It's uh, It's been in the biggest gainers and biggest losers a lot lately. And whenever you see that, that often means that it's a very volatile project and that there's a lot of money to be made in it. Yeah. Uh, Michael thing? Norris asked, uh, can we get some TA on Algorand? Uh, yes, we will look at... Wait a minute. Didn't we just look at Algorand? Am I crazy? Was I not looking at Algo? I, yeah, we looked... Yeah, we were... Uh, I was yeah, going to say, yeah, I think yeah. we, ju we just okay. looked yeah, at Algo. Just asked in chat. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I was, gonna, I was like, chat. wait a minute. Did I look at the wrong project? <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. Um, uh, Kevin Rostran said, how can you buy XRP? XRP right now is not on Coinbase. To be honest with you, I haven't tried to buy XRP since it was delisted from Coinbase, so I'm not actually totally sure which exchanges it is on. I, I, I think assume if you build a coin market cap, click on the coin. Yeah, go, go that's down. what I was gonna say. Coin market cap will have places. This is a, this it. is a good this is a good teaching moment. So yeah. jump onto my screen, Smay, and I'm gonna show you how you find this out. So I'm gonna go ahead and walk you through this because I actually don't know the best place to find XRP. Just because you can find it on one exchange doesn't mean that's the exchange you want to buy it on. So go to Coin Market Cap. Scroll down to your favorite cryptocurrency, hit XRP, go right here to the word market, and then scroll down and you will see, okay, as I thought, There's it's so on many. Binance, yeah. it's also on BitHum, Kucoin, Kraken. Huobi, uh, Kraken, FTX, Gate.io, Coin One, which that 
Looks look, very suspiciously that, like that it looks could get sued. Suspiciously like the Coinbase. Yeah. See, I'm not sure about I that. I wouldn't trust that. That account. looks like a real good exchange. I yeah. think I'm gonna go not buy so, it on there. Not so sure about the trademark on that one, but Gosh. never mind. But anyway, yeah. So uh, that's how you would find that. Okay. No, uh, another interesting concept that I saw in chat uh, earlier is, uh, uh, Jeb, can you go on more business meetings? Because every time you do, the Bitcoin price seems to rise. I know. That, well, didn't we not say <laughs> we that on Tuesday? We, we covered we it We said yesterday. that on Tuesday. We it, called it. It's an indicator at this well, it's point. It's an indicator. Someone, Whenever I go to business yesterday meetings. yesterday correlated, they said maybe the second Wednesday of every month is the same day Michael Saylor DCAs into Bitcoin. Yeah. No, what it is is the <laughs> I'm actually going to a meeting that Michael Saylor is at, and every yeah, time he talks yeah, yeah. to me, he's like, man, I need more Bitcoin. And he goes and buys like $100 million <laughs> worth of Bitcoin and it pumps. No, but I will be gone in the next, um, for the upcoming week because I am going to be at the North American Bitcoin Conference down in Miami. We're driving down on this Sunday, which is the 16th. We're going to be there the 17th and the 18th, and we're coming back the 19th. So you're not going to see me on this show until next Thursday after Friday. I'm here, I'm here tomorrow, oh, but yeah. the next time I'll be here is Thursday and Friday of the coming week. And the reason is because I'm going to be down at the North American Bitcoin Conference meeting you guys. So if you haven't gotten your ticket yet for the North American Bitcoin Conference, it's in Miami. There is still time. You can still get your ticket, but obviously time's running out because the conference starts in like four days. So make sure you check it out down below. There's going to be major power players at that conference. We're talking about executives of billion-dollar companies. Ripple, the executives from there, I believe it's the CTO, is going to be there. Uh, the founder of blockchain.com is going to be there. That's a big deal. Uh, we're also talking about Mark Cuban, uh, Michael Saylor. Uh, excuse me, not Mar Michael Saylor. I'm sorry. Francis Suarez, the mayor of Miami, is going to be there. President Nayib Bukele of El Salvador is going to be there. A lot of big people are going to be down there. We're going to be down there interviewing people, making content, making connections so that we can bring you more content here on the channel. But if you want to meet us, we are going to try and meet as many of you guys down there as possible. So make sure to sign up for the North American Bitcoin Conference. The link is in the description box down below. There's going to be all kinds of speaking engagements, sessions, breakout sessions. You're going to get to meet some power players. There's only about 4,000 people going. So it's not a 50,000 person engagement where it's going to be impossible to run into the person you want to see. If you want to go and meet Mark Cuban, there's a chance you can pass him somewhere. So, you know, sign up down below. There are a lot of interesting people that are going to be there. And by the way, if you're enjoying today's show, smash that like button. Let's see if we can't get up to 750 likes. Let's go. Uh, we have time for one more super chat if we have any I think, more. I think one popped up. Yeah, uh, we got one from uh, Famu Kiffy. Um, it says message retracted. Yeah. Um, he said, do you find an oversaturation of L1s in crypto? Do you think many survive with ethnic? I think that oversaturation of L1s, I think there is a, there's a lot of competition going on right now in the layer one protocol space. So we're talking about the Ethereum's, the AVAX's, the Cardano's, all of those of the world. And the problem, the, the tricky thing is they're all really good projects, but it's unlikely that you're going to have 15 different major L1s eventually you are going to have one they're all going to start merging together through cross-chain compatibility you uh, built through things like polka dot layer zeros but two oftentimes in industry you'll find two or three big fish come out and then you got two or three big sharks in the water and they say hey you want some fish okay you can have some fish and i'll share you i'll share over here with you and then we'll all take a bite and then you don't have 15 sharks in the in the same pond you might have two or three like you got a you got a coke and you got a pepsi you got an Apple and you got an Android. You've got a, uh, you know, you've got PC. You've got um, Apple. You know, the, normally an industry will boil down to two or three major power players. Whenever you're talking about uh, major global technology, especially internet technology, I mean, we're talking the same thing about, you know, streaming services. You got YouTube and Twitch. Those two own 95% of the market share. So that's probably what's going to happen. Ethereum is a safe bet to be one of the big power players. The question now is which the, which is the other one going to be? Is it going to be Binance? Is it going to be Solana? Is it going to be, you know, Avalanche? Is it going to be Cardano? Or are they all going to uh, play very much second fiddle to Ethereum? It's an open question, but I do think that you're going to make money in all of them. I think they're all good projects that are all going to be around in 10 years. But it is going to be, uh, we're going to have to give it time because this is still a very nascent and immature market. And that's not a bad thing. That is a sign of growth because we're growing quite fast. Now, let's go ahead and jump on over to Bitcoin. I'm going to kick off our Bitcoin technical analysis with an explanation of what a short squeeze is. So basically, when you ever hear of a long or a short, when you long the market, you are buying low in, a, well, you're buying in hopes that you're buying lower than you're going to sell. So you're buying it, say, $40,000 in hopes that you're going to sell it $50,000. You'll profit the $10,000 difference. So that's a long. But a lot of people don't know what a short is. A short is actually the inverse. You are selling, you're borrowing someone else's money. So you're borrowing $50,000 from this person worth of Bitcoin. You sell it right here. Now you're sitting on the cash, and then you 
want to buy back in lower. So you sold a $50,000 Bitcoin, you bought a $40,000 Bitcoin, and then you pocket the difference. So it's actually the inverse of a long. So that's what a short is. Now, when we're talking about short squeezes, we're actually talking about something called a leveraged short. You can do a 1x leverage, a 1x short or a long where you're not using any leverage, and then you can't really do a short squeeze with that. You would just have people, you know, closing the short and buying back in to cover their principal. In this case, what we're talking about is leverage. So we have an, a website that I look at quite a bit over here uh, called coinglass.com forward slash liquidation data. And if we scroll down here to this uh, chart that says total liquidations, by the way, it does show you all the major exchanges, Binance, Bybit, uh, FTX, Huobi, BitMEX, Dairybit, Bitfinex, and OKX, a lot of these exchanges that have <clears throat> a lot of their uh, a lot of their, uh, da, 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 most of their uh, trading volume coming from le uh, leverage trading. If you look down here on the period right here, a uh, period of one minute, you can see if we scroll down, actually, I'm going to go to five minute. You can see even as we speak, there is quite a bit of, of shorts being liquidated. Not that much compared to what we have seen in the past. Like it was not that long ago that we saw, you know, $127 million worth of longs get liquidated. And that resulted in a drop on Bitcoin's price of $1,000 or so. But right now on the five minute chart, we just saw $3.36 million liquidated in five minutes. Then we saw $1.3 million. Then we saw just shy of a million dollars liquidated. Remember, whenever a short position gets liquidated, all of the money that was borrowed has to be bought back in. So it creates buying pressure. So this number that you're seeing here, 3.36 million, you know, 1.34 million. Um, if we go out to the 30 minute here, we can see the total is sitting around 5 million, 3 million. There's about $10 million in the last hour and a half that has been liquidated. And that is causing about 15, uh, 10 to $15 million of buying pressure. So what we end up seeing happen is that when you see a massive number of shorts, and we're about to get to how many shorts there are, because there's a lot of shorts on the market. We have a tweet that we're going to look at in a second. Whenever you get to this position, and all of these shorts are lined up, they're like dominoes. And when the market starts rallying too quick, they just go, da -da 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 -da, they knock them out, and you just rally so, so fast. I watched Bitcoin rally 25% in one hour in, I believe it was April of 2020. If I go back on the chart here, I believe I'll be able to show you on the four-hourly chart. Let's see if uh, TradingView will let me go this far back. I think it will. Yes, it will. So if we're on the four hourly chart, and we're looking back here on Bitcoin. I vividly remember this happening. I watched it happen. It was the 12th of April, 2018. You can see Bitcoin was trading down here around $6,800. Let's just get some perspective here. Bitcoin was down from its local high 43%. Had been in a downtrend for 35 days. Sounds pretty familiar, doesn't it? Bitcoin had been trading sideways, seemingly found a bottom just above $6,000. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? There were a ton of short positions open. Sound familiar, doesn't it? And then what happened was Bitcoin started a rally and then it went and it just rallied super fast because all those shorts got absolutely annihilated. And Bitcoin, let me just measure it for you. Bitcoin rallied 13% in the span of one hour. I said 25 earlier, I was misremembering. And then it rallied 20% in the span of a day. That's what I was trying to say. It rallied incredibly fast because of a short squeeze. So the question on our mind right now is... Is a short squeeze coming or is Bitcoin just going to continue trading sideways up here? Because I'm going to be honest with you, now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's go into the technicals. I'm going to be honest with you. Bitcoin actually looks a lot healthier right now than it has recently. And I'll tell you why. Whenever Bitcoin has gone into a downtrend for pretty much ever since November the 10th, which was a great day for Bitcoin, it was a great day in general. That was the day that Bitcoin hit $69,000. Whenever Bitcoin has gone into a downtrend ever since then, notice what it's done. It set a new lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high. I'm going to show you all of them. Then we set an equal high, new higher high. Right here is where we were starting to get a little optimistic because Bitcoin was setting new higher highs. Didn't happen. We had a massive drop. Lower Lower high, lower highs. But guess what happened? We set a lower high right here, and now we're setting a higher high. That's a pretty big deal because we had a high at 43,600 and Bitcoin has managed to rally above it. It's not very often that Bitcoin manages to actually get back up above its resistance, at least in recent memory. And by the way, there's also a resistance level right here that Bitcoin is currently in the process of trying to get above that's constituted by all of these bottoms over here. This was the bottom of the falling wedge that Bitcoin broke bullish out of, and we're breaking uh, through that resistance if you extrapolate it. So there's a lot of great things going on. And also, this is funny, Tim mentioned this before the stream. He talked, to, he tweeted about how there was a trading channel right here, and literally the minute he tweeted it, Bitcoin had this big jump. Now, what I don't want to do is I don't want us getting overly hyped on one small little candle wick right here. Bitcoin sitting at 44000 It wicked all the way up to 44000 500. But what I do want us doing is I want us understanding that there is the potential for a short squeeze. And if that occurs, it would result in a major movement to the upside. 
So with that said, let's go ahead and go through our oscillators and see what we're seeing. By the way, if you haven't liked the video yet, I ask you to smash that like button because it really helps to support the channel. If you think we're providing high quality technical analysis, which we're very much hoping that we are, it would be very appreciative. Tim, I want your take though. I, I want to I let people know because I'm sure people in chat are watching the price action being like, oh no, the price is falling. Uh, what I'm looking at right now, in case anyone saw that tweet, I was on the 15 minute chart, which by the way, I'm not on that frequently. It just really helps you see the clarity. For anyone wondering about the Bitcoin price right now, if you go and look at it, uh, I'll show as it. we talk about all the time, there's never a flat, even line. It's always a zone. The price right now, just so you guys know, is doing something very bullish, and that is broke through that line with confidence and is now returning back down to the zone to build what, what used to be resistance into support. So anyone who's freaking out saying, oh, the price rallied all the way up to 44,400, now it's back down to 44 even. Well, guess what? Where was that lo Where was that zone of resistance? It was between 43,900 and 44,074. Our price has not dropped below 43,900 again. It's actually saying right now we're right at the top of that zone. So I want to, you know, get it ahead of people before people are like, oh, it, it rallied, but now we're falling again. No, no, it's doing a bullish thing turning resistance into support, yep. that's bullish. Very bullish, and I'm very excited about it. But, of course, we want to temper our excitement. We don't want to let our excitement turn into FOMO because this has just begun. Bitcoin has only been rallying for three days here, but it is encouraging because this is actually, by the way, this is something I literally just noticed. This is the first time, and the day's not over yet, but this is the first time since the 6th or 7th of December that we've seen three green candlesticks in a row. We've seen a lot of red in a row. In fact, for a time here, we saw six red in a row, but we have not seen three green in a row since back over here, unless I'm missing something, but I don't believe I am. We've seen two green in a row, but we've not seen three green in a row, and we have not seen this close yet, but to be honest with you, this was barely a red candlestick. We've basically seen an uptrend form ever since the bottom down here. Now, I do want to mention also that if Bitcoin closes where the way it is right now, this would look like a spinning top, which would indicate that we probably go to the downside, but of course, we're going to keep going. So, I'm going to run through some of these technical analysis, some of these technical indicators pretty quickly because I want to get to some other points because we have a lot to talk about here. First and foremost, bullish MACD cross incoming. That is huge. Huge. Bullish MACD cross incoming is huge for a multitude of reasons. Number one, it generally indicates that the bulls are the ones in power and it is going to give more confidence to the bulls. That is very important. But on top of that, it gives us confidence as well that this uptrend on the lows for MACD is going to sustain. And we also have this downtrend on the lows for Bitcoin, which brings into play what we talked about on Tuesday, and that is MACD divergence. So we've talked about how there are divergences on MACD as well as on Bitcoin, it, uh, as well as on RSI. It's not just it's not just uh, RSI that can play out divergences. We've seen a plethora of them form over the last uh, year on Bitcoin. Just take a look at these five examples. <clears throat> There's four of them that have played out. We're currently playing out the fifth. Bullish MACD divergence is a thing, and it's something that I've started to learn more about and doing historical analysis on just now. And by the way, if you're in crypto for six months, a year, two years, and you're thinking, man, there's so much that I don't know. I just realized how powerful this is like this week, and I've been doing technical analysis on crypto markets every day for five years. So, you're always learning, and th this is something I'm learning about right now. Wow, bullish MACD divergence, or bullish and bearish MACD divergence. This is a real thing. I'm going to go back and do some more research on it, of course, but so far, it seems to be a very powerful indicator. And by the way, on top of that, the RSI is bottoming out down here. We can see that we've rallied all the way up to 42. The last time that we saw RSI pull all the way back down below 30, we actually did not pull below 30 here in early December. We pulled down to 30 and a half. The last time we pulled below 30 was in May of 2021. Boom, we moonshot. It took a little bit for the bottom to come in, but we did rally. Same thing Same thing occurred back on uh, in March of 2020. Boom, we moonshot. Again, it may not have happened immediately, but we, did, uh, we were at our bottom when we hit that low. Back over here in May of this year, we had bottomed out. We were at $30,000. We did pull back for less than 24 hours, briefly below that twice, but we pretty much had hit the bottom on price action. We had not hit the bottom in time. This, this is something I want to be clear on. We did not hit the bottom in time, but we did hit the bottom in price. So the RSI right now is arguing that even though we might trade sideways for a little bit, as far as what level, what price level we're going to go to, we should have hit the bottom. And also, don't forget, it does mean that we've double bottomed down here around $40,000 with the local low back here on the 20th of September. So one of the other things I want to mention here is the VPVR. We've talked about VPVR pretty pretty extensively, pretty lengthily, uh, but the VPVR right now is giving us some strong support. There's a zone right around here. Boom, you can see it. That's called sharp memory right there, guys. You just kind of like, oh, yeah, I, re I remember that. It's crazy. When you look at a market every single day, you, you're just like, oh, yeah, I know what that's going to say. I don't even need to look at it. I just know because I've seen it so many times. It's like if I turn on the 20 EMA, I can tell you that it's going to look a little something like 
like that. And uh, that's kind of what we're talking about here. That's why learning uh, technical analysis is so important because you want to be able to do it quickly. So you're analyzing a lot of altcoins. But nevertheless, on VPVR, there is a major zone of support that we built back over here that we're currently respecting. We would have to put we would have to find a lot of sell pressure to push Bitcoin this low. And by the way, the other reason we would have to find a lot of sell pressure is because I don't know about you, but I know about Tim and I, we ain't selling. We're going to be buying the dip and a lot of people are in the same camp as us. So if Bitcoin did start going too far to the downside into the 30s, you're going to see so many people buying the dip. We've been in a strong downtrend for so long, the trend has to reverse at some time at some point, guys. Even in a bear market, it's not very common for a downtrend to last this long. And we're not in a bear market. That is a categorical fact as far as I'm concerned. We have not entered a bear market because a bear market typically is defined by the inflow and outflow of the retail investor. And the retail investor, believe it or not, is still here and they're still buying Bitcoin and they're still buying the dip. And we're going to talk about all of that. So one of the final things I want to mention here is Market Cipher, and then we're going to look at Lux Algo, and then we're going to jump into our next segment. Take a look at what Market Cipher is doing here. Market Cipher has played a green dot of momentum. There's also another green dot down here. These do not form very often. When they do, we're typically going to see a rally. We've also seen that money flow is the lowest, it went to the lowest point that it has been at ever since October of 2019 which is a bottoming signal if ever I've seen one. I talked about on another stream how RSI's hit the lowest low that they'd seen in about two and a half years. And the VWAP is pushing to the upside as well. This is a basically a buy setup. I would give it a day or two, but this is pretty much a buy setup right now. And it looks absolutely phenomenal on Market Cipher. Like I said, I would give it a few more days, but it does look like the early stages of a buy setup. I would want this money flow to be maybe about here, maybe around negative 15 instead of around negative 30 before I really said, okay, this is a this is a swing trade buy setup, but I do think that it's looking pretty solid. So let's also go ahead and look down here on the four hourly chart. I want to show you Lux Algo because Lux Algo is now getting to, Lux Algo has been kind of dormant for the last two months because Lux Algo has been saying like, okay, I'll tell you, I'll tell you when we're going to go into an uptrend. I'll tell you, I'll let you know. I'll let you know, okay? If it happens, I'll let you know. That's basically what Lux Algo has been doing. And uh, well, it, it, it's finally gotten to the point where it might be letting us know something. You know that I've been looking at Lux Algo on the four hourly chart for a while now. And the reason I've been doing that is because I want to see a buy setup on the four hourly chart so that that can precipitate itself all the way up to the daily chart. If I see it on the four hourly chart, then I'm going to be patient. I'm going to wait for it showing on the six hour and the eight hour and the 12 hour and then the daily. So what does that look like? A buy setup on Lux Algo to me, and this is a strategy that I've come up with. I've actually spoken with the creator of Lux Algo. He loves this strategy. I even asked him if there's any way that we can set up a, a certain configuration of Lux Algo for this strategy, and that might be something that we can do. I don't think it is right now, but maybe in the future. But pretty much what my strategy is, look for a, look for a buy or sell signal. Look for this line right here, which is called the trend catcher, to agree and confirm that buy or sell signal. And then look for something down here called Lux Oscillator to confirm that buy or sell signal also. We are already green on the Lux Oscillator, which this is part of the Lux Algo premium package right here. We also have a strong buy signal, which is the first time that we've seen a strong buy signal in a while on the four hourly chart. There was some more noise back over here with false signals. None of these really counted. We were still in a downtrend. Literally every single one of these did not have confirmation. We were just in a downtrend. Don't have time to explain it here. If anybody wants to explain it to people that don't quite understand what I'm saying in the chat, feel free. But the last time we saw the strong buy signal was on basically Christmas. We've not seen one since then. So my strategy is a three-part strategy. Buy signal, Lux Oscillator is bullish, and then Trend Catcher is green. Trend Catcher is red right now, but we're above Trend Catcher. How do you get Trend Catcher to turn green? You get far enough above it. So if Bitcoin does manage to hold above $43,500 for a few days here, if it does manage to rally up to $45,000 or something, we're going to have a confirmed buy signal on the four hourly chart, and that is going to be very exciting. That does not mean that we're out of the woods. That does not mean that we're going to all time high, but it does mean that then we would start looking at the six hour. Okay, the six hours in a downtrend right now, we'd be looking to see if it was going into an uptrend. Then we would be looking at something very similar out on the eight hourly chart. In fact, I take that back on the six hour chart. Looks like Lux Algo did drop. There actually is a confirmed setup on the on the six hour. My apologies, guys. I did not check that before we went live. This happened yesterday. There's a buy setup right here on the six hour chart, and it's not on the four hourly chart because the trend catcher dropped farther. That's pretty important, guys. So we see that there's a green Lux, uh, green trend catcher right here, buy signal. And then if we look at Lux Oscillator, we're green. So we actually have a confirmed buy setup on the six hourly chart, which has not happened in two months. Okay. Well, in that case, let me pause here. I want to bring Tim in. What do you think about that, Tim? That's well, a pretty big deal. Even more interesting, what I noticed yesterday, and I forgot to mention on the show, so I put it on my Twitter, the daily and chart, the, the trend catcher turned green. Yeah. 
So it, it's there's a lot of interesting things happening right now. Lux Algo is really giving us I mean, some interesting things. At the end of the day, huh. I, I love what Jeb just said, that uh, that strategy using Lux Algo alone. If that's something that you want to use because you're still growing your other technical and uh, analytic alone. skills. Oh, well, I mean, I think, though, that's a great strategy, even if it's you're great looking at other things. You can use it on I your use Lux Algo but... as a confirmer. So, for yeah, example, exactly. I, I was looking at, you know, uh, right at the beginning of the 11th was when I was saying, hey, if we break to this certain level, this is where I think there's some confidence. Uh, breaking the 43, I think. Oh, no, actually, no, the green, the, that trend catcher turned green before even I said that yeah. I think this is a good buy zone. It did turn green. Come on, I mean, listen, here's, good. I think I told you guys on the show yesterday or the day before, hmm. Lux Algo was one that had to grow on me. I used to be almost a, I was a skeptic. I was a, a negative person saying, I don't think Lux Algo works. Ever since I've met Sean and got to talk with him personally, I have become a believer. Uh, yep. So it is It is one of those things I heavily recommend. And I, that's not, like, you can trust, I mean, I I know I'm just a guy on the screen, but ask Jeb, ask me. I had several conversations of almost borderline frustration with Lux Algo, and I have been able to change my tune. So it's it's a great yeah. it's a great addition to your TA skills. Yeah, and the reason that Tim's frustrated is because he was just using the buy and yeah. sell signals, but there's actually like 20 indicators in the Lux Algo Premium Package, and yeah. they're not intended to be used on their own. The strategy that I use combines the three that I mm -hmm. really love the most, and they have given us at this point, which I I was gone yesterday, so I'll admit it. I took a day off from doing technical analysis. I know you can't believe it, right? I, I was <laughs> focused on building the business yesterday. Um, I didn't look at it, so I'm looking at this more. I'm like, wait a second. I didn't. I, I'll, I'll be completely honest with you. I didn't realize that. That is huge. That the trend catcher has changed green on the daily chart. Six hourly chart. We have a buy setup. Eight hourly chart. We have a buy setup. Uh, let's check the 12 hour chart. Let's see what the 12 hour is saying. Because the reason this is so important, we do. We have a bullish setup on the 12 hour, guys. That's I ridiculous. That is, is awesome. some. I've been looking for that for two months. Drop a one in chat if you if you have seen how many times I've been looking for a buy setup on Lux Algo in the last two months. And we've been saying that hey, look, the bottom if it's not in is very close mm -hmm. right here. When we were at forty seven thousand, we were saying hey, look, the bottom seems to be close, but we could go to forty two. What happened? We went to forty two. We actually went to forty. So Bitcoin did have the ability to go a little bit lower, but this combined with everything we're about to talk about, big deal, guys. I am definitely more bullish right now than I was because I was. A little skeptical. I was like, are we going to go down to 37? I'm not sure, but right now, I'm getting pretty happy about that. So don't want to spread FOMO, but I also want to make sure you guys know how important that is. Now, speaking of things that are important, let's talk about something called the DXY. It's colloquially known as the Dixie, and it is something called the dollar index. Basically shows the value of the it basically shows the strength of the dollar. So we're looking at a tweet over here from Kelly Kellum. Shout out to at, shout out to Kelly at Kelly Kellum on Twitter. He's got two screenshots here. This vertical line on Bitcoin lines up with this vertical line on the DXY. Both of these are on the 11th of January at 900 hours of, of this year. So notice here, Bitcoin started rallying from 41,700 all the way up to 44,000, and where it is right now at the exact same moment that the dollar index dollar currency index dropped from 96 points down to 95 points. One one point doesn't seem like that big of a deal over on Dixie, but it actually is. It's not as volatile of a, of a chart as Bitcoin is, of course. But essentially what we're looking at right now is that there's fear in the market around the dollar and the dollar is losing some of its strength. And whenever that occurs, it seems like people are moving into Bitcoin. There's definitely a strong correlation going on here. And we want to pay close attention because in the short term, when the dollar doesn't perform well, sometimes that will cause people to be fearful and they'll leave the crypto space because for some reason they get fearful of the U.S. dollar losing its value. So they put money in the U.S. dollar because they think it's safe when it's not. But in the long run, whenever the dollar takes a hit, Bitcoin rallies. You want, you want proof of that? Go back two years when Bitcoin, when half of the U.S. dollars ever minted were printed and in that time, Bitcoin rallied from $10,000 to $70,000. That is not a coincidence when Bitcoin was designed to be a hedge against inflation. It was designed to fight the very thing that, that the dollar is being used for, which is taxing you through inflation. That's why Bitcoin is succeeding. But I also want to show you a couple of other things here. I'm going to just pause on this. I'm going to read this briefly. Over the last, this is from Lynn Aldean, uh, Lynn Aldean Contact. Over the past 20 years, whenever the dollar index, uh, dollar index weekly RSI hits 70 overbought and then rolled over into negative momentum, that is usually. Uh, presaged a, presaged a rather persistent bearish movement in the dollar from that point. So you can see we actually got overextended on the dollar up here at 96 and a half points. That does typically indicate that you're going to see a drop in the dollar currency index. So if what we have seen is true, that there is a, co a correlation between the dollar currency index going down and Bitcoin going up, and we know that the dollar is not in the best shape right now, and we know that if it gets overextended on RSI, it pulls to the downside, that could give us buying pressure that we would need, or at least exuberance and enthusiasm for Bitcoin that we need to cause this market to rally. 
Now, this is a very interesting on-chain metric as well. We're going to try and run through all this pretty quickly because we have a lot to talk about here. It's, it's days like this where I'm very thankful that I can speak quickly. Blockchain indicator suggests Bitcoin could be close to bottoming out. This is something called the Entity adjustment Adjusted Dormancy Flow. Let me break down what that means. Dormancy is a signal of smart money. So there is a concept in crypto that the longer you hold Bitcoin, the more smart money you are. So if you've been holding Bitcoin for eight years, then you're probably very smart money because you haven't uh, freaked out and sold the top at uh, you know, at 2017 or in 2021, or, you know, you haven't freaked out and sold the dip. You've held the money for a long time. So the longer you hold the money, the more in the camp of the smart money that you talk about. Entity adjusted dormancy flow is telling us about those smart money people. What are they doing? There is very, very little amount of Bitcoin being moved that is in the smart money camp. And if we look at the history here, every time that this metric goes to the downside, that's when Bitcoin bottoms out. We're talking about March 2020 right here. We're talking about June and July of 2021. We're talking about December of 18, January of 19. We're talking about early 2015. All of these times that dormancy flow pulled this far back, this is only the fifth time in the last five, 10 years that we've seen it pull back below 300,000 uh, 300, where it is right now, that has been the bottom. Likewise, whenever you get to the top, the dormancy flow starts to increase. That means that people that have been holding for five years start selling. You know, they bought it $200, they're selling at $60,000. You can't blame a guy for wanting to get, what is that, 3,000%. So what we're seeing now is that people are holding. The smart money is holding. The smart money will sell the tops, but the smart money is holding the bottoms because they understand how this works. That is an indication, and this is why this is important, of of what the people that know what they're doing in Bitcoin and cryptocurrency markets are thinking. Not what they're saying, but what they're thinking and what they're doing. Remember, you want to look at what somebody is doing if they're very successful, not just what they're saying, because there are plenty of people that say one thing and do something else. <clears throat> Jamie Dimon and JP Morgan. I'm sorry, I didn't want to drop any names, but I kind of had to throw that one out there. It's really funny. JP Morgan's always talking about, oh, Bitcoin this, Bitcoin that, and pretty much their entire staff loves Bitcoin. So just interesting. Look at what people are doing, not what they're saying. What are the whales doing? What's the smart money doing? They're buying and they're holding. It's very, very important that we understand that so that we know uh, what we should be doing as well. Now, I'm going to look at this chart really quickly, and then we're going to jump uh, probably... No, we have a few more things, then we're going to jump yeah, into our know, super chats. Uh, uh, we had a super chat that I want to answer right now, and sure, it'll, okay. do it, it'll lead us in the right direction, from I of the Beholder saying, look at the weekly charts, TD Sequential. Sure, it, yeah, let great, me look at it. Great, great catch there, I of the Beholder. Let me grab up weekly chart, TD Sequential, TD Sequential. By the way, guys, TD Sequential is a built-in indicator on TradingView. If you want TD Sequential, you're going to need to have TradingView Premium. You can sign up with TradingView Premium with the link in the description box down below to get paid indicators like Market Cipher, Lux Algo, TD Sequential. You need TradingView Premium to be able to use those. If you sign up with the link below, you'll be helping to support the channel. You're absolutely right, though. There is a green nine flash that just showed up on the weekly chart. Very, very powerful. Nine flashes on TD Sequential are very, very very rarely ignored. We saw one happen back over here in May of 2021, and the market went into a rally. There are other examples of that as well, but there actually are not that many. But whenever they do show up, Bitcoin goes into a rally. Definitely, definitely a strong buy signal. Now, I do want to show you this. This is remarkably important because we're talking about this idea of short squeezes going on. So the question on your mind right now, if I'm saying that a short squeeze could occur, you should be asking yourself, okay, well, how many shorts are there? Because naturally, the more volume that there is locked up in shorts right now, the more buy pressure there could be if they get liquidated, right? So looking at this chart right here, this right here is Bitcoin perpetual swaps. You can see it's showing up on Kraken, Deribit, FTX, OKS, BitMEX, Bybit, and Binance, a lot of the major um, you know, uh, leverage trading platforms. Look at the red bars down here. This shows you how many open shorts there are. Look at the green bars up here. This shows you how many green, how many longs there are. Very few people are long right now, but a very large number of people are short. This is very important, and it's actually ridiculously bullish. You might think, okay, the whole market's short right now. The market must be crashing because everybody's short, and they think it's going to go down and follow the masses, you know, jump on the bandwagon. No. No, not a good idea in this case. Follow the smart money. Don't follow the retail money. The retail makes a lot of mistakes. The smart money, the billionaires, the whales, they typically know what they're doing. The retail tip, and by the way, the whales are not the ones doing 100x leverage trading, by the way. It's very rare that, le that whales are doing that. And if they are, they're not doing it because they want to turn 10 million into 100 million. They're doing it so they can only risk 100,000 of that money. So you get the point. The point is the retail right now is short. The market right now is ridiculously bullish, and we're already seeing liquidations happening. I mean, even during the time that we've been live, we've seen more liquidations happening over here on Coinglass.com. Seriously, guys, I have this bookmarked. I have no affiliation with Coinglass.com. Don't know a single person from their team. 
Never met them. No affiliation with them. I just like their website. There have been quite a lot of shorts being liquidated over just the last few hours. There's a couple longs being liquidated because Bitcoin's dropped a little bit. You know, there's definitely volatility going on, but there's a lot more open shorts right now than there are open longs. You can just see by this red chart. Very important that we understand that. Now, I'm going to briefly look at this, and we're going to continue moving on here. M underscore Ernest underscore M Ernest on, on uh, Twitter showed this. Looks like there's a lot of manipulation going on in whale activity. Take a look at the false demand down here. This is a heat map that's showing you where and when. Don't forget the when part. Where and when there are buy orders. There were a ton of buy orders down here at $38,000, at $38, which looks like false demand used to, make, used to make believe that the price will reach those levels. This was a manipulation event right here. A lot of people putting a lot of buy orders, a lot of whales putting buy orders down here at thirty eight to bait people down there so that it could drop below thirty nine. And that those whales could turn around and open short trades. Now, I know I said that they typically don't enter massive leverage trades, but the whales do enter short trades and they do enter long trades. And sometimes they will use leverage. So what they wanted to do here potentially is get the get the buyers to believe with all of this vol all of this volume. Because by the way, all these buy orders show up on exchange. You can see it in the order book. This is not something that is speculation. This is easily verifiable fact. There were a ton of buy orders down here. That would make a lot of people think, okay, all of our support's at $38,000. We're going to just drop to $38,000. I'm going to sell and I'll buy back in lower. And then those whales would short the difference and make the money on the $2,000 drop. And then look at this. In one moment, in one infinitesimal moment, we're looking at like less than a day of price action here, by the way. So we're talking about within like five minutes, they all disappeared. That is a classic manipulation event. There's still some buy orders down here at 38,000. 38K is a level we've talked about being very strong, so it makes sense that people would be looking to buy down there. The fact of the matter is, guys, there's manipulation going on in the market trying to get us to drop. The, also, the other fact of the matter is whenever the people manipulating the market realize that they can't manipulate it any longer and they realize that they can't get it to drop any lower, that's when they normally flip and say, okay, $41,000 is good enough. Okay, $44,000 is good enough. Okay, $39,500 is good enough. We'll go ahead and buy. I guess we'll just go ahead and let it rally. And then they flip, and then the market explodes. That's how it happens. And that's what I think we're going to see in the next two weeks. If we see a short squeeze, it could happen much faster. So I also want to mention a couple of other headlines here. I'm going to move these, these kind of quickly. Cryptocurrency exchanges see massive Bitcoin outflows. More than 26,000 Bitcoin left digital exchanges on Tuesday alone. A leading crypto whale wallet also moved 4,700 um, Bitcoin from Binance to Zappo. So what we're seeing is that even still, there are outflows leaving exchanges. There are people taking money off of exchanges, likely to be hodling them. They're likely moving them into cold storage because we have gone very far to the downside. And what smart money wants to sell Bitcoin now? If they were going to sell Bitcoin, they would have sold it two months ago. The smart money is not selling right now. The smart money is trying to manipulate the retail to sell. And the smart money is buying the dip. That's what the smart money is doing. And that is the setup for a major rally. Last but not least, this is a very interesting article. I'm going to kind of pick this apart a little bit. Taurus Kling blockchain to launch India's first Bitcoin ETFs. Now, pump your brakes. You might be thinking, oh my gosh, India just decided they're going to launch a Bitcoin ETF? Not necessarily. It's a little more complicated than that. If you don't know the whole history of India, nobody, India doesn't know the whole history of India when it comes to cryptocurrency. They can't make up their mind. They can't decide if the sky's blue or purple on crypto. And this is a very weird headline because I'm going to believe it when I see it, frankly. Taurus Kling Blockchain, a 50-50 joint venture between Sam Gohesh and Cosmia, fin uh, Cosmia Financial Holdings. I probably butchered both those names. And Kling Trading India signed an MOU with India INX to launch India's first Bitcoin and Ethereum futures Keyword futures, ETFs, and Metaverse U.S. listed large cap discount certificates. So this has not happened yet. This is in the approval process of what is what it seems like. But it would be very interesting to see a futures ETF for Bitcoin and Ethereum launching in India. Maybe we would finally start to see some clear regulatory frameworks in India. I personally, from the little I know about the way that Bitcoin is working in India right now, don't believe necessarily that India's regulatory infrastructure is set up. For an ETF, I could be totally wrong. This seems a little sudden considering India doesn't seem to like Bitcoin and crypto and they're very, very uh, particular about their own currency. In fact, they suspended a lot of their own paper currency, like 80% of it a while ago because they were trying to move their whole currency digital. That happened about five, six years ago. So just interesting things coming out of India, but it's something we're going to keep our eye on. With that said, we're going to go ahead and move into our next intermission here. We're going to read chat. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Let's see if we can't smash that like button all the way up to 1500. Thank you guys so very much for tuning in to the show. <laughs> uh, Famu Kiffy, he said, great show, guys. Thank you, man. Um, Thank Guns you, man. and Cryptos asked, when will L1 be able to do over 150K transactions? 
per second. Uh, Visa does about 70K right now, but I use my card two, three times a day. I do L1 transactions 40 to 80 times a day. L1, I'm assuming he's talking about the L1 protocol. So yeah. Ethereum, Avalanche, Cardano, several of those projects like Avalanche are theoretically infinitely scalable because of the way that they have side chains. And I'm not using the correct blockchain terminology. I am not a blockchain developer, but I can explain it like this. Avalanche, for example, is just one is one example I can give you. Uh, it splits up all the transactions into different highways. So you got like, think about if you're trying to go through a city, you might have, this is the way that Kelly actually explained it to me when he was explaining Avalanche to me, I was learning about it. Think about like you're trying to go through a city you have the highway for the cars, that's for transporting people. You have the canal for transport, or the river for transporting goods on a ship. Uh, you have the train for transporting goods on a ship. And then you have the plane that flies over the city. And you split up the transportation method depending on the type of thing that you're trying to transport. That's what Avalanche does, is it allows for infinite scalability through side chains. And theoretically, you can have as many transactions as you want on that project. Now here's the issue with that question. You do want cryptocurrencies to be able to do over 100,000 transactions per second if they're going to go and serve 500 million or a billion people globally. The thing is, though, at some point, that number gets so high that it turns into a marketing campaign. And when you see projects advertising, we have a million TPS and they're worth $50 million market cap. Okay, great. What do you have, what do you have a million TPS for? A theory, Bitcoin runs on 10 transactions per second and it's doing okay. So... TPS is important. I think put I think people put too much emphasis and too much stock in TPS because of the amount of five years ago it was very important because TPS numbers were in the dozens. At this point, it's very common for TPS transactions per second to be well into the thousands or ten, or tens of thousands on projects that simply don't need that much throughput yet. And the final thing I'll say is that cryptocurrencies can and do get updated and developed with new technology that allows them to transfer more crypto, uh, more cryptocurrency at once. So TPS is not something that I would be worried about. Ethereum, you should be worried about it because it needs Ethereum 2.0 to come online. The rest of the projects, they're pretty much all in a place that you don't just don't need to worry about it. Uh, Rabbit and Tent Anter, he said, hey, Jeb, me and my friends in Dubai like so much what you're doing, especially your TA. Uh -huh. All the best, Brown. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Yeah. And uh, Cody Kuhn, he gave a donation. Um, just to let you know, Cody, uh, Taylor, our customer service rep, she's going to uh, email you and answer all your questions. So, But other than that, that's it. And Super Chats. There's a, there was a good chat question. I think that was phenomenal in the way it was phrased. Uh, Aloise said you're talking about a possible short squeeze on a short time frame, right? In a macro, it wouldn't apply because uh, shorters have been, short, have been shorting and taking profits since 52K which is a great point the, the the short squeezes that we're looking for here coming up, Aloise, would be the ones within the 40 to $42,000 region. But you're absolutely right. And that's in a, in a small way, actually really, really good is that, hey guys, we're gonna have a short squeeze probably. And, and as you guys are looking at the price right now, that's not playing out right now. It turns out the bears were able to turn us back. We're back down to 43, four. It's okay. There will come a time where we play out and get a short squeeze happening to shorts that were done around that 40 to 42. Then as we approach back towards 50, that's when we start getting into those, those shorts that are placed all along the way, all the way down. The same way with longs on Bitcoin. When, when there was a long squeeze on Bitcoin coming down, there wasn't just one level where it's like, oh, we just liquidated all the longs. It's like, okay, we liquidated that one, and then that one, and then that one, and then that one, and that one, because people were putting these longs all along the way on the way when we moved from 40 where we have 46 back up to 52 there was a bunch of longs posted in the same way there have been a bunch of shorts being posted ever since we did top out at 52 and we're coming back down and they've been very beneficial uh but guess what if they don't go ahead and take their profits from them as we work our way back up they will be get liquidated out because here's the deal all of the shorts right now have been building and building and building and building and building for the last two months and by the way those shorts are in more and more profit than ever because the market has dropped quite a bit but all of the crypto all the people that were in longs have already gotten liquidated that there's not there's not many people in longs right now there's maybe four yeah. or five days worth of trading activity that people have longed in there are two months worth of shorts going on in the market ever since we topped out on november 10th and by the way I do understand TPS is one of the most critical pieces of, of one of the most critical numbers to measure the infrastructure of a project. My point is some cryptocurrencies have 50, 100, 150,000 transactions per second and they just don't need it. So the number's already so high that it's like, okay, you're good. Yeah, you need a lot of TPS, but you already got it. That's kind of the point I was about. I wasn't saying TPS is not important. I just want to clarify that. Mm. Cool. Yeah, I think I think that's John about Bill it. Yeah. just donated. He said, "Do you see any link between TVL total value locked of L ones and price?" Yes, I do, and the reason I do is uh, an, I can use an analogy that I use quite a bit. Think about Ethereum. I'll use Ethereum as an example because Ethereum 
is worth a, uh, is worth you know half a half a trillion dollars or whatever it's worth, um, and uh, excuse me, four hundred billion dollars, so a little less than that, and it has. A insane amount of money locked on it. If we look over here at something called uh, DeFiLlama.com, you can see that there is $150 billion locked in TVL over on Ethereum. We're looking at Curve, we're looking at Convex Finance, MakerDAO, uh, Wrapped BTC, a bunch of different projects with a lot of money locked. Think about the interstate highway system. The interstate highway system is the infrastructure for America, but the only reason that the interstate highway system matters is because people do things with it. They travel, they uh, transport goods on it, they build towns around it. Like It's very common in human history for towns to spring up around canals because they're around rivers because it was a way to transport. Well, in America, because of the interstate highway system, it's very common for towns to spring up around the interstate because that is a way that you can bring goods, services, and people into the community. So my point is here, the interstate highway system is so important and so valuable because of how it's used. Ethereum is so important and so valuable because of how it is used. All of these things that are built on top of Ethereum immediately drive value back to Ethereum because if you take Ethereum out, everything built on top of it ceases to function. So yes, there's absolutely a correlation there. It's not a direct correlation. It is a long-term correlation, but it is a very, it's, it's a very strong correlation that's hard to measure is what I should say. It's not that it's a weak correlation. It's a strong correlation. It's just very hard to say, okay, well, total value lock went up $10 billion, so price now will go up $15 billion. It's not like that. But as TVL goes up, so too will the price of Ethereum, and that is something that we have historical evidence and proof of. So with that said, let's go ahead and talk about Ethereum. Ethereum right now is in a very interesting predicament, a very interesting situation. We've talked about how th there's a support zone on Ethereum between $2,700 and $3,000. That support zone comes from our local bottom back on the 21st of September, and it also comes from the 61.8% FIB level at $2,900. So that's where I'm getting this zone from. We talked about a month and a half ago, based on Fibonacci retracement, based on the percentage retracement we would have to see, 40%, that we would probably see Ethereum drop down to $3,000. A lot of people didn't like that. A lot of people said, no, Jeb, Bitcoin's going to hold $3,600. It could have held $3,600. It didn't. It dropped 40% from all-time high the way that it always does. It's very common to drop 40% from all-time high. In fact, you know, back over here in June and July, we dropped 60% from all-time high. At the moment, though, Ethereum has bounced and set a higher high above the high that we saw in September. So this is a very good sign. It means that Ethereum is seeing, uh, you know, a big bottom come into play. And by the way, we're also looking at that same MACD divergence out on the daily chart that we're seeing on Bitcoin. We see higher, uh, higher lows here on the price lower uh, lower lows here on the MACD. That is a bullish MACD divergence. We also have bullish RSI divergence. So RSI divergence and MACD divergence both giving us a signal. Now let's look down here at Lux Algo for a second and see if Lux Algo is giving us the same signals on Ethereum that we saw on Bitcoin. I believe that it will be. If we take a look here, we can see that yes, there has been finally a confirmed buy signal showing up on the four hourly chart. Now you might look at the MACD here, for example, and say, oh yeah, Jeb, but the MACD is converging bearish. It's going to cross bearish. Yeah, but look at this. It's rallied from negative 140 all the way up to 32. That's the one of the biggest rallies in MACD we've seen in a while. Lux Algo is bullish. We have a buy signal. We have trend catcher turning green and we have Lux oscillator green. That is a confirmed buy signal on four hourly. Let's start going up the time frames and seeing if it's still there. Green Lux Algo on six hour. Confirmed buy signal on six hour. Okay, six hourly charts bullish. Let's look at the eight hour. Again, I don't recommend using Lux Algo in a vacuum, but everything else in Ethereum's technicals and fundamentals are supporting what Lux Algo is saying right now because Lux Algo is a very powerful indicator. We have trend catcher turning green. Uh, Lux Algo's buying uh, has a buy signal, confirmed buy signal on Ethereum and on on uh, Bitcoin on a lot of different time frames. This is telling me that if we're not at the bottom, we if we're not at the absolute bottom and we're not about to go back up up to all time high, that we're going to see a pretty major rally on Ethereum. We might be talking up close to four thousand dollars on Bitcoin. We could be talking up to fifty thousand dollars at the at uh, at the same time. Though what you need to remember is that none of this is you know, set in stone. It hasn't happened yet. And we do need to make sure that we're being vigilant. And I, we do need to make sure that we're not trusting this little miniature rally too quickly. It's only been in effect for two days. Yes, Lux Algo is saying we're bullish and it seems very confident on that. Lux Algo has yet to lead me astray in that when you're comparing, when you're combining it with the rest of your technical analysis. But again, the longer a rally exists, the more confident that you can be in it. So I'm not going to jump into a, uh, well, first of all, I'm not trading this. I'm not trading these swings anyway, but I wouldn't personally jump into a swing trade longing right now anyway. But in a day or two, if we're still moving to the upside, we're still making progress. Ethereum's up at 3500 bucks, Bitcoin's up at 45000 and we start seeing short squeezes, then yeah, I would get quite a bit more interested in those projects. Now, we're going to go ahead and look at 
Crow. We're going to go ahead and look at this project because you guys are always asking about Crow. That, of course, being crypto.com token. If we look down here, or coin, excuse me, if we look down here on coin market cap, it's sitting at number 16. If you don't know what crypto.com is, let me break it down for you really quickly. One of the most important companies in the entire cryptocurrency industry, it, blockchain.com, coinbase.com, binance.com, all of these pro all of these different companies worth billions and billions and billions of dollars. We reported about two months ago about how crypto.com uh, just had the... Um, the uh, help me out here, Smay. What was it called before? The Staple Center. The Staple Center got renamed to the Crypto.com Arena for 20-year contract. It was, I believe, they paid 850 million dollars for that. It was somewhere in the range of a billion dollars for that contract. They also uh, they they're sponsoring the uh, Philadelphia 76ers now, so their logo oh, wow. is going to be on the jersey. For, oh, I didn't uh, know that. Contract. That's that's amazing. Yeah. So Crypto.com is a big company, and the thing about Crypto.com, the coin, is that to get their debit cards that. Uh, have some of them up to 8% cash back, which is ridiculous. You have to lock up crypto.com coin for a certain amount of time. So it's almost like an, <laughs> it, it's a, you, yeah. So anyway, the way that they're able to pay that out is because they have crypto.com that they sell onto the market and then they're able to pay out that 8%. Of course, they're also making a lot of money through transaction fees and everything. So it is a company that's being very successful. Crypto.com, the project though, if we take a look here at the year at, at uh, the all time, you can see there's been a pretty big drop this year. And the reason I would wager that has happened is because there was a lot of exuberance going into November about crypto.com because it's called crypto.com and they just had that arena uh, get the, uh, that contract for the arena getting renamed after them. There was a lot of hype in the crypto.com space. We had the Matt Damon for Fortune Favors the Brave ad that came out. Ever since then, Crypto.com has been in a pretty big drop. So it's down 50%. Tim, I want to ask you this. Knowing how Crypto.com works and the fact that it is the back end, uh, it is the backing for the Crypto.com you know, debit cards and their financial services, do you think that this is a project that people should be looking to maybe make a trade on? But more importantly, do you think people should be investing in Crypto.com? Well, so the investing answer I could give, I don't want to give this as financial advice, but I think just do, as we've talked about on the show before, and Jeb kind of alludes to right now, that was not a cheap go around. That they probably didn't do it themselves. The amount of investing they had to get on the on the front end just to buy the name crypto.com to do all this stuff would imply I think there's a lot of people with a lot of money who believe in what they're trying to get done. As far as specifically what they do, it, it, it is kind of frustrating what you have to do, and they kind of are making it you have to buy their product. And that's there's a lot of frustrations there, but there's also a lot of upside. So as far as investing goes, I do think that investing potentially is a smart one. I'm going to be honest, though. I want to say that with, you know, take that with a grain of salt because I probably will not end up going there. I'll probably end up investing in, and sticking into some altcoins. Maybe in the future when I want to look into it more, we'll, we'll see about that. As far as a trade setup, oh, gosh. Um, looking on the daily chart, we're definitely seeing, gosh. Kind of an ugly chart right now, it's to be honest with you. very ugly chart. It's an ugly chart. I'm sorry, know, crypto. Not, not anything massively you got an ugly chart. bearish. Not anything massively bullish. If I come down to four, no. I mean, I don't think. I don't think I would say this is a good spot to make. A I trade really don't either. think it is either. I think Crow is kind of sitting in a really boring, almost like yeah, it doesn't really know what it wants it's to just, do. It's spot. pretty boring. Yeah, pretty boring. Yeah, and here's the thing you guys got to remember about that. One, it is in a falling wedge, and that could break to the upside. So definitely watch this downtrend here. If it breaks above fifty cents, yeah, you might see an uptrend. The thing you got to remember about this is that, and don't take what I'm about to say wrong, I'm not attacking crypto.com in this, but it is a heavily manipulated market by the people that created it. That's kind of the way that it got to, what is it, a $25 billion market cap, $12 billion market cap. It's a heavily manipulated project in a very centralized way. And it's manipulated because the reason that it's worth $12 billion is because you have to buy it and hold it to get their debit cards, which are amazing. Their cards are incredible, by the way. Um, so that's not, I'm not making a value judgment there, but it is Factually, you cannot deny a heavily manipulated market. There are There is manipulation going on in it. So you have to be careful about investing in it because when it is heavily manipulated like that, one entity, i.e. crypto.com, the company, has the ability to make or break that project. Any of the crypto.com they're holding, theoretically, they and I'm sure there's bylaws and stuff set up where they can't just do this, but they could theoretically say, screw that, we're just going to dump all of our crypto.com and exit. They're not going to do that. It's a big company. They're federally regulated. It's, it's a massive company. I'm not saying they're going to exit scam or anything. They are a good company, and I do think Crypto.com is going to be here for 20 years, or they wouldn't have just dropped a billion dollars on that Crypto.com arena. I think it's a good company. But what I yeah. am saying 
is that the coin is heavily manipulated, so I would be personally a little bit careful about investing too much into it. Not a bad trade and not a bad idea to buy some so that you can get the debit card, but I would probably leave it at that personally. I'm not a financial advisor. I would encourage you, one, to talk to a financial advisor, and two, if you want to invest in crypto.com, it's a very centralized project, Call someone from their team. Ask them what they think. Let them give you a sales pitch. Maybe they've got something to say that I haven't. Let's go ahead and move on here to Ave. Ave is a project that a lot of people really like because it is a project that actually does something. There's a lot of cryptocurrencies that say they're going to do something and they haven't done anything yet. Ave is a project that says it's going to do something and it actually does it. There's a lot of staking rewards on Ave. It's sitting at $3 billion market capitalization sitting at rank number 49, strong project. Right now it's in a massive descending trading channel, uh, sorry, massive descending triangle pattern, and it is currently sitting a little bit above its absolute low in that pattern, which is at $165. It's actually at 212 right now. Um, so what I'm seeing on this project is that it has uh, entered a downtrend. It has rejected from about $300. It is down from its all-time high, about 66%. And I do know that Ave is a project that a lot of people make a lot of money with and that has some utility. So I would say personally that Ave looks like a project that I would be interested in potentially picking up here. But again, since it does have utility, you have to make sure that you're, I mean, hopefully it has utility, but there's a lot of projects that don't. Since it has utility, before you invest in a project like this, you have to check how the utility is doing. So you need to look at its value proposition, all the staking and everything. How is Ave? How are how are the returns? How is this project operating? Um, are people interested in this project? What's the sentiment? How's the development going? You need to do that fundamental analysis on it. So technically speaking, I can tell you that you know it might drop another uh, down to about one hundred and sixty dollars, down another twenty percent. That is actually very much in the cards and probably likely, to be honest with you. But the question of Ave, should you invest in, is really going to come more down to fundamentals. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump into our next community discussion. Let's go ahead and yeah. check in with the chat and see what you guys uh, are saying. You know, something I want to I kind of jump into, and I'm sure chat is Full going screen. here. You know, Bitcoin just went down to 43.1. And, and this is something I've seen put in chat both yesterday and today. And I was kind of like, hey, I need to see something else happen before I would make this call. But Jeb, I want to get your opinion because what I'm watching happen to me is saying, oh, yeah, that's actually probably exactly what's happening. Mm -hmm. uh, cup and handle formation forming right now on Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. uh, what I have currently as the top, I'm looking at the two-hour chart. I'm taking the top of that wick from the... It's the 5th of January around 1900 and then running across the candle bodies here. Again, can, you know, angle of that is it's, you know, you can do what you want there. Just so we, just so you know, though, if I read this correctly, so when I do a cup and handle formation, let's say this plays out as a cup and handle. We're, we're making some assumptions here, but stay with us. That cup and handle formation, we take the bottom of the price action up to the top of that, that rim of the cup. About 50% of that line is what the price action should be. And 50% of that line would put us at about 46,300. Mm -hmm. Okay. A couple of days, uh, yesterday I put on uh, Twitter, before we had the cup and handle, when the price, we didn't know any of this stuff was happening, we kind of had an inverse head and shoulders pattern happening. And when we did that, and we drew our shoulder lines with that peak right there at the 6th of January around 1500, and the peak that we had again right at, let's see, um, right here around the 12th of January on 900, uh, 9 o'clock, again, if we play out a a inverse head and shoulders pattern that puts us at 46 i think it's seven but 46,700. i think someone else put in chat if you look at the fibonacci retracement i believe uh there's a there's another point if you do fibonacci retracement of what we just saw we should easily bounce back to about 47,000. there's a lot of different things and which is to me it's not a confirmation because that's that we're getting ahead of ourselves is pointing in the direction of could Bitcoin right now be doing a cup and handle formation? And I'm seeing chat, people are asking, oh no, everything's dumping, should I sell? Well, that's exactly what manipulators want you to be saying right now, even though the price is still well above where we were here a couple of days ago. Jeb, what are your thoughts about all of that? Take a look at coinglass.com on the minute chart right here. We saw in the span of one minute, $10 million get liquidated. What we just saw was a miniature long squeeze. So we're talking about the importance of short and long squeezes. But remember back to the tweet I showed you earlier, where are all the, le where is all of the, there's like 15 tweets here where are all of the trades right now the vast majority of people are short so yes we saw 10 million dollars get liquidated from longs but there's not that many longs mm -hmm. there aren't that many longs so you can't liquidate many longs if there's not many longs here's what's going to happen guys 
excuse me, not here's what's going to happen. Here's what is happening. The whales are trying to shake out the weak hands one final time. And they're doing that by allowing for a long squeeze to happen to try and drop the price. If this thing drops all the way down to 40K, okay, then you have an argument. But if this thing drops down to like 42, five or $42,000 in bounces, then you know all we did is we put a little bit of a corrective movement in the primary trend, which is an uptrend. That's one, very healthy. Two, proves that manipulation is going on. And three, shakes out the weak hands finally. If we're looking at the ability for Bitcoin to get, uh, to have uh, liquidations take place, we have seen that when Bitcoin pumps up above 44,000, that we start seeing liquidations. We saw about 5 million happen earlier. In just the last 30 minutes, we have seen about 25 to $30 million get liquidated in longs. There aren't many longs to liquidate. It, there are right now seemingly about 10 times as many shorts as there are longs. So all Bitcoin has to do, put a little bottom in here, bounce and rally because the weak hands just got shaken out. When you start shaking out weak hands, you know the only people that are left are the people with the strong hands, right? So if we're sitting at $44,000, $43,000, and you shook out all the weak hands through trying to liquidate it and cause a, sh a long squeeze, um, then all you have left are the buyers. You, all you have left are the bulls. All you have left are the strong hands. They're going to buy the dip, and they're going to rally it, and then guess what? The short squeeze happens. And then instead of seeing a five-minute drop $1,000, you see a five-minute rally, five uh, you know, uh, instead of seeing a $500 drop in five minutes, you start to see a $5,000 rally in the span of five hours. And I think that's what we're going to see happen. And by the way, bringing out Elliott wave here, if we look at the Elliott impulse waves here, you would generally see a one, two, three, four, five pattern happen. I couldn't tell you exactly how the rest of these waves are going to play out. But what I can tell you is that we're due for a, for a wave two to the downside anyway. And maybe the third wave pushes us up here to that Fibonacci level that Tim was talking about. For example, that Fibonacci level is, if we just draw this right here, that would be up, excuse me, actually, I want to use this more recently. Uh, high. Maybe that Fibonacci level is up here at $46,000. We rally to that. Maybe we pull back again down here to 38.2, and then maybe we rally up to 61.8. This is how this market could play out right now. And if it does, that is huge. That would be very, very bullish. This wave two to the downside is not only one manipulation, Two, it's going to shake out the weak hands and lay a stronger foundation. And three, it is going to help to build support because we need a correction. Uh, even in this small little rally, we need to see corrective movements going on. So it's not unhealthy. There's nothing unhealthy about what's going on here. We're actually very excited about Bitcoin having uh, some healthy ways of shaking out weak hands. That's what I'd say to that. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Yeah, I know we have some questions. Uh, Full screen. He, uh, he said, uh, Tom Wilkes, he said, Hoping to meet you in Miami next week. Can you repeat the info on the members Q&A, please? Yeah, absolutely. So, well, I can tell you right now, guys, if you haven't signed up for the North American Bitcoin Conference, you should. I am going to be there. We're driving down on Sunday. I'm going to be there Monday and Tuesday, and then we're coming back on Wednesday. Make sure to go ahead and check the link down below. Sign up for the North American Bitcoin Conference. It's going to be in Miami. I want to meet you guys. It is going to be so much fun, and I cannot wait. But if you sign up with the link down below, you're going to get 20% off the ticket price. And by the way, guys, when you do that, it helps to support our channel. So make sure you sign up for the North American Bitcoin Conference. We would love to see you down there. And also make sure to hit that like button. We've got almost 4,000 people watching, 1,200 likes. I know we can get that higher. Let's see if we can get to 1,700 likes before the stream ends. And by the way, guys, also, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, let me tell you why you should. We believe in a concept called financial sovereignty. This is something we've been talking about a lot. Drop a hashtag financial sovereignty in chat if you are on fire for that phrase like I am. Financial sovereignty is different from financial freedom. Financial freedom is the ability to go and do whatever you want. Financial free, financial sovereignty, what we mean by that is you having control and authority over your finances rather than your finances having control and authority over you. I want you to be able to use your finances in a way that helps you to succeed. If you want to buy a house that's big because you got seven kids, I want you to have the ability within your financial means to do that. I want you to be able to take care of a family member that needs it. I want you to be able to donate to the charities and the ministries and the churches that you care about. I want you to be able to take that ski trip that you've been looking forward to with five years for your, with your wife and two kids. I want you to be able to do these things. To do so, you have to have sovereignty over your money because when you have sovereignty over your money, it frees you up to live out the purpose that God has called you to do in your life. That's our mission. That's our vision. And that's why you should subscribe because we want to see you succeed. And that is exactly how we are doing it. Uh, that was great. Uh, Smith, can you answer the second part yeah, of the question yeah. where he said, can you repeat the info about members Q&A, please? Yeah. Um, Jeb, why don't you pull up on your screen? You want to pull up the YouTube channel? Yes, indeed. Let's okay. do it. So, guys, the, the our member stream is happening literally right after this stream. Uh, we're going to be going live about five minutes. I'm going to set it up. Uh, but in order to find it, so as you can see on Jeb's screen right now, you're going to go on our YouTube channel and then go over to the membership tab right there. You can see our last Woo! members Q and a that something that looks just like that is going to pop up because guys, this is a beta feature, meaning it's not complete. 
uh, for on YouTube's end, which means they're not they don't have all the features as a normal stream. They're not going to be able to send you notifications as far as I'm aware. So in order to find it, go onto our channel, go to the membership tab and you'll find it. We'll go live literally right after this stream is over. Woo! It's Good deal, man. It's I'm over. looking forward to it. It's going to be great. All right, let's read some more super chats. I think we have some, right? Yeah. Uh, more Ivan Cortez, he asks, what happens if every Bitcoin is bought? Well, I mean, theoretically, if the number, if if every single Bitcoin is off the market, then you can't move the market. You know, that's something called illiquid supply. The illiquid supply of Bitcoin right now, the last I checked, which was a few days ago, is 76 percent. So that means 76 percent of Bitcoin is not moving in the last certain amount of time. So Bitcoin has, you know, close to 19 million mined. And we're only really dealing with about 3 million here, 3 to 4 million that's actually tr being traded. So whenever that happens, that actually creates a lot more stability in the market. And by the way, we have a video on why Bitcoin coming out about volatility tomorrow. And we actually address that concept in the third episode of Why Bitcoin. So make sure you stay tuned. Smay, when is that video coming out tomorrow? Uh, why Bitcoin? Yep. It's coming out at 6 p.m. Eastern Prime time. Standard Time. Prime Time on the Crypto Jeb Eastern YouTube channel. Standard why time, Bitcoin, episode three. Why is Bitcoin volatile? <laughs> we're going to talk about all of that and why Bitcoin's volatility is not a bad thing. It's actually kind of a good thing. So we're going to talk about that. Why Bitcoin, episode three, is coming out. We cannot wait. We're going to talk about that volatility question there as well. Yes. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, Jeremiah Santiago, he asked, uh, have you guys seen the game Crypto Jackpot? I have not. Yeah, I was looking at it a little bit. Um, just looks like uh, regular casino type games involving crypto. That's yeah. what I noticed. So Ooh, fair yeah. enough. Seems like it. Um, crypto Alchemist, he asks, "Hey guys, what's your view on the bill from Tom Emmer that's trying to prohibit the Fed from issuing uh, CBDCs? Um, is it a big deal as Ben seems to think?" I'm going to have to look into that before I answer that. What I do know is that there's a lot of very controversial bills in the House and the Senate right now. I mean, you got all kinds of acts going through and that are trying to be voted on. There's a lot of drama going on in the House and the Senate. I typically don't weigh in on politics unless it has to do with uh, civil liberties or it has to do with cryptocurrency. I do have opinions. Obviously, I'm not a I'm not a non-political person. Everybody has political stances, but those are really the only two I weigh in on. I would have to look into that more before I gave you an, any opinion on it. Mm. Uh, Lions of Crypto said... Jeb, looking forward to more DeFi videos. Thanks a yeah. lot. Yeah, Heck yeah, man. It's going to be great. We got so much good content coming out this year. Guys, we're working around the clock on so much content. It's just not even funny how much stuff is coming out this year. You guys are going to be absolutely inundated with amazing content this year. I am so excited for what we're going to be able to provide for you. I've had this dream of how this channel would run for the entire time that I've been building it, and it is coming to fruition, and I'm so incredibly excited and blessed and thankful for every single one of you who has made it possible. Mm. <laughs> Artist Anonymous said, can you explain the value of having a fixed monetary policy and proof of work cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum? Stability. So one of the issues that we've run into and uh, st okay, stability and delayed gratification. So the issue that we've run into with the fluid monetary policy of the U.S. dollar and other global economies and glo global markets is that whenever you get a new guy in charge and he comes in and he changes everything, then the entire economy has to adjust to the way that this guy's doing things. And we've just gotten used to that. But that's really not the way it should be. Whenever you build a found, whenever you build an eighty foot, to, uh, eighty story skyscraper, you build a foundation that is supposed to be rock solid and it's not supposed to move for however long the foundation is rated for. Normally they're rated for a hundred years, one hundred twenty years, one hundred forty, one hundred fifty, sixty years. However long, it's not supposed to move at all. And if it moves a quarter of an inch, we're talking about a thousand foot by a thousand foot concrete slab. If it moves up or down by a quarter of an inch, you got to get geotechnical engineers in there to come and prop it up and fix it because if the foundation on the building starts moving in the wrong way the whole building could lean and lean and lean and collapse you don't want that to happen well what we've been doing for the last hundred years ever since Keynes and the communists got their hands in global economic monetary policy we have been building our economy on this wobbly wibbly wobbly foundation and we think that it has been very good for us because the global economy has grown so much it has not grown because of monetary policy in fact that's held it back the reason that the economy has grown so much is because of the never-ending advancement of technology we need a strong monetary policy, one, for stability, but two, also so that we are able, as a culture, to embrace delayed gratification. Instead of saying, okay, I'm going to save for 10 years so I can buy a house, what people do right now is they go and they get a, a, a home loan on an FHA loan, 96.5% uh, of the loan. They put down 3.5%, and then they go use credit cards to get the other 3.5%, and they got $0 of their name, and they own a half a million dollar house. That, how is that a good idea? It's not. 
And I understand, I get it. People want to have homes for their families, but we have to embrace this concept of delayed gratification if we're going to be successful. We have got to realize that it takes nine months for a child to be born. It takes 10 years to build a billion dollar company. It takes, you know, 40 years to have a political career that could lead to a presidency. It takes time. You know, it takes, if you want to go to Mars, it takes 10 months, however long it takes. You can't do it faster. And what we're doing is we're impatient as a society and we're trying to go, do it faster, do it faster, do it faster, do it faster, do it now, 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 now. And social media certainly hasn't helped with that. And we've built a culture of instant gratification. We need to have a culture of delayed gratification where people are willing to make long-term investments and bet on the future and be patient. And we need to have a stable, solid monetary policy, which we do not have right now. Taking all that back to Bitcoin, what does Bitcoin do? It has monetary policy, if you want to call it that. It's code, but you can call it monetary policy. That is stable, that is unchanging, and that promotes delayed gratification because it takes 10 years for Bitcoin to go from $1 to $100,000. It takes 15 years, and it doesn't happen faster than that. It takes its time, and it teaches people patience. You know, success doesn't just favor the brave. Success actually favors the patient as well, I'll add to that. Yeah. Last one, the simple man, 699, said, hey, Jeb, I'm in my car and just seeing a drop in Bitcoin. Any reason for that? Yeah, so there's a short, there's a small long liquidation going on right now. Bitcoin dropped a little bit, and then there were some longs that were placed. To our, Essentially what happened here, this is exactly what's going on. Bitcoin rallied $4,000 over the last three days. A lot of people got excited. They entered long trades too early. What did I tell you about 15 minutes ago? I said... It's probably a little too early to enter a long trade. You might want to hold off a little bit. You might want to wait for a little more confidence to build. Well, a lot of people didn't hear that advice, and they went into a long trade right now a little bit earlier than they should have. Bitcoin has confirmation, but not enough. We've been uptrending for two days. We've been downtrending for two months, and the whales are trolling them by dumping the price, by selling Bitcoin on the market, causing it to drop, liquidating those longs to shake out the weak hands. This is why you don't try and long at the very bottom of the market. You wait a little while for the market to start and confirm an uptrend. Now, if, so, mm -hmm. if these people had longed when it's at $50,000, okay, great. But when you're longing right now, when we've barely even begun the uptrend, you're going to get knocked out, and that's what's happening. So it's not a bad idea. It's just yeah. something that, uh, that we need to keep in mind. You know, let's be, let's be um, diligent about where and when we place our trades. Another thing is simple, man, uh, 699, I, I realize you were in your car, so hopefully you were not seeing this because you're a responsible driver. But there was bearish RSI divergence that would call the reversal on the hourly chart of Bitcoin that showed this. What I mean by that is the price of Bitcoin continued to go up, whereas the RSI started to go down. But just so you guys know, unless this price continues to fall down below the level of 42,500, which, you know, could happen, don't think it's going to happen. It is setting itself up now for bullish RSI divergence to reverse back to the upside yep. and continue this trend. Because what's funny is, despite the fact that we are now down below 43,000, we are still in an uptrend. And I, yep. some people don't want to look at that, but until we get down below, I would say... The truth is, until we get below, if we drop back below 41, now we can say, hey, guys, we're we're no longer in uptrend. But until that happens, technically speaking, we're still in a longer time frame uptrend. Which is a very good thing, and that will continue. And mm -hmm. I, I do believe that will continue, I should say. Do we get through all of them? That's it. Cool. Well, guys, if you enjoyed today's stream, smash that like button. Thank you guys so very much for tuning in. And make sure to go follow me on Twitter, at CryptoJeb. I actually just passed 50,000 followers over on Twitter. We're at 50,400. I'm getting like 1,000 followers a day right now over on Twitter. Thank you guys so much. By the way, drop a one in chat if you found the CryptoJeb brand through the Twitter account, because there's a lot of people that have found me through Twitter now. Thank you guys so much to everybody who has uh, decided to come and follow us on Twitter. And by the way, I want to give you a little bit of an assignment. Go over to my Twitter, go to this pinned tweet. I tweeted hashtag financial sovereignty over hashtag financial freedom. Retweet if you agree. Go in here, hit the retweet button, hit quote retweet and say, I saw this on hashtag coffee in crypto live. Go do that to support the Twitter and let everybody know that financial sovereignty is what we want to be looking for. We want to have control over our finances. We don't want to be controlled by our finances. And all of the ideas of financial freedom fall under financial sovereignty, but it changes the point because the point is that you control your money. Your money doesn't control you. That's what we believe. So make sure to go ahead and go over there and do that. I do want to update everybody on what is happening with tomorrow's price prediction, HODL trophy winners. It is shaping up to be an interesting race, and we got a little less than 24 hours to see who wins. Uh, Smey is at the bottom of that prediction with 37,000. Uh, it is theoretically possible that Smey is still in this. It is not 9.30 on Fridays where we announce the winner. 
But I'm going to go out on a limb here and say, Smay, I don't think you're taking home the Hoddle Trophy this week. <laughs> uh, Jeb is right above him at 38,200. Again, when we made these predictions, there was kind of that shot that we were looking at levels. I, I actually really liked Jeb's prediction at the time if we the Bears had won that little battle. Turns out the Bulls won. So, again, I, yeah. I'm not going to put a lot of hope in, uh, in Jeb's winning this week. Taylor, my wife, said 40,500. T. Shroom said 41,800. That's where t it starts to get interesting. Theoretically speaking, T. Shroom, despite not being here, is kind of in the play if the Bears continue to push. But I think it's, it's going to be really tight between Kelly and me, where Kelly said 43,900. I said 44,300. Make sure you come back tomorrow. We will announce the winner. Uh, pretty much right there at the beginning at 930 of Indeed. who won the HODL trophy for this week. Well, guys, don't forget, we're jumping right into our members Q&A. So if you are not a member of the channel, hit the join button down below. You get a lot of cool perks. If you hit the join button, I have a video over there explaining what all of them are. One of them are these Q&A live streams. So make sure that you go to the channel. You can jump on my screen. I'll show them. Make sure you go to the channel, Crypto Jeb. Go right on over to membership and check this page here in about 10 to 15 minutes. We are going to be live. In fact, it should be a little quicker than that even. We will be live, and we're going to answer all of your questions. It's going to be a whole lot of fun. But, guys, if you enjoyed today's stream, smash that like button. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at Crypto Jeb. That's all we got for you today. I will see you in tomorrow's video. Before I go, I do just first want to thank each and every single last one of you for watching. As always... And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.